Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. Welcome to the 44th lecture <coughs> on economics, management and entrepreneurship. In our last lecture, we continued our discussion on inventory management. If you recall, we consider different aspects of inventory costs and we took deterministic inventory models. The basic question in inventory control is when to order for replenishment and how much to order. Assuming deterministic situation, we had developed the Wilson's lot size formula. Then we introduced uncertainty in demand and in supply. We said that in addition to keeping the expected amount to fill the demand during the lead time, one must have additional material in stock to cater to uncertainty in the demand. This we said is buffer stock. We said that at a given service level, one can calculate the buffer stock. This stock should be added to the expected demand during the lead time to find out the reorder level. Then we said that one can find out the expected number of units sought and then there are two cases, one a lost sales case and the other the back order case. If we can estimate the cost due to back order or lost sale then in addition to the two usual costs that we had considered earlier namely the ordering cost and the inventory holding cost we can also consider the shortage cost. Considering these three costs one can then find out the amount that we should ask for reordering. Now we can have fixed quantity model or fixed period model. And then towards the end of our lecture in the last class, we also introduced materials requirement planning for dependent demand. And we took a particular case, this case let us revise once again. The case is illustrated here in the form of a product structure diagram. If suppose that the assembly A requires one day to assemble components B and C and it requires two items of B and two items of C. To make B it requires two lead time two days and C requires three days. B in turn requires two items of D and three items of E d requiring two days time, e requiring one day time and similarly c requires d and f with number of parts of d and f mentioned here and the lead time mentioned here. This is called a product structure diagram. We can use this information in this form. Suppose that we need to get 1000 items of A on August 7 with one week delay, order must be placed for A <clears throat> for 1000 items on the 6th day. Since A requires 2 items of B, of B and 2 items of C, then B and C must be available in sufficient quantity here, so that one can manufacture or assemble 1000 items of A. Now to get 2000 items here, it requires 2 days time, therefore order must be placed for 2000 items. And similarly, 
for 2000 items of C, 3 weeks delay therefore, order must be placed on the 3rd of August. Now, 2000 items of B, each item of B requires 2 items of D and 3 items of E. So, 4000 items of D and 6000 items of E must be available on day 4 and there is a 2 week delay for D and a 1 week delay for E. Therefore, order must be placed for D on the 2nd of August and for E on the 3rd of August and similarly one can calculate here. So, you can see that for materials requirement planning which is good for dependent demand one has to first of all explode from the product structure diagram meaning that we need to have a bill of materials and we should also have a master production schedule to know when how much of the final product we require. Once we know that using the bill of material one can find out the number of components required and from the lead time knowledge we can also find out when to place the order. So, these are the basic considerations for material requirements planning. You can see here that the lot size differs from component to component and from day to day. That is why this is called lot for lot ordering. However, one can also consider lot sizing the way we had been doing in our independent demand case. We can also, also consider safety stock and we can also give little more than the lead time expected lead time given there to be on the safer side. So, these are various uh, developments on the basic material requirement planning. Now, before we end our discussion on inventory control, let us consider a concept which has been very popular in recent days and this concept is called just in time manufacturing just in time or JIT. Basically, it says that one does should not have lot of inventory at stock, it should get inventory as and when necessary. Now, this has reduced the inventory stock greatly. Let us see how this is actually implemented in practice. So, JIT manufacturing stands for just in time manufacturing it makes material available just when it is necessary, it reduces the need for work in process, material tracking and the transactions associated with soft floor and purchasing systems. Now, this is an example of how a just in manufacturing system can or operates in practice. Let us assume that we have to assemble a few sub assemblies. Let us say that this is the sub assembly area and this is the final assembly area. And let us assume that we have two containers, they are full with the sub assemblies. So, what is done and these two are available at the site of the final assembly. Now, this axis, the vertical axis down, down way is the flow of time as time passes and measured in terms of minutes. Now, the first container is taken and is assembled. As it is assembled, then it is this situation after let us say 15 minutes is the situation when the first container is half filled or partially filled and the second container is intact. Then after 10 15 minutes, the first container is totally empty and the second container is now free second container is full. Now, after some time the second container comes to the final assembly comes near the final assembly for use after a few minutes one or two minutes and at the same time this empty container goes to the sub assembly area. As this second container is being used for final assembly it gets partially filled and meanwhile the empty container which comes to the sub assembly area gets filled and then is passed on to the final assembly area. So, this is the case when the 
second assembly is almost going to be empty and thus this one which was empty is filled with the sub assemblies and are now available for use at the final assembly site. Now, here is a case after about 10 15 minutes this becomes empty and is passed on to the sub assembly area once again and this container this filled container is available for final assembly work. Now, this cycle continues. So, you will see that at any time there is only one container of uh, final uh, sub assemblies that are available near the final assembly and that is the stock. So, the there is no need for much of a work in process inventory. So, this is the concept of just in time inventory and it has large number of uses. So, in these 2 lectures and 15 minutes or 10 minutes today what we have done we have introduced the concept of inventory, the concept of economic order quantity, safety stock, materials requirement planning and just in time inventory. Inventory management however, is just not inventory control it also includes purchasing, storing, inventory updating, packing and shipping. So, inventory management is much wider a term, but we considered only the inventory control aspect in much greater detail because that is the most difficult part and is mathematically sophisticated. The next topic that we are going to discuss today is supply chain management. Supply chain management is quite important a sub subject and it is gaining importance in today's world particularly because the manufacturers should know how to keep contact with the ultimate customers. Gone are the days when the, the manufacturers used to decide what to send to the suppliers to the customers how to send when to send. Now, the customers are demanding the type of products they require should reach them as soon as possible and the best quality material should be available to them and at the least price. Thus, supply chain management is becoming more important because the cost of manufacturing gets amplified as it passes through its supply chain to the ultimate customer and therefore, the price that the customer pays is much higher than the cost of manufacturing. There are different players in a supply chain, each player has to get its share of profit. Thus, it is very important to design the supply chain in such a manner that the overall supply chain cost is minimized and the overall value of the supply chain generated through the supply chain is the maximum. Let us see how it can be done. Let us also let me also tell you at this point that supply chain management has become a very very important topic today and it is sometimes used or taken as a full subject we wish to only consider in one hour or one lecture the essence of supply chain management without going into, into any mathematical sophistication. So, supply chain management is the topic for today the main topic. First of all what a supply chain means? A supply chain consists of all parties or players involved directly or indirectly in fulfilling a customer request. So, all parties who are the parties? The suppliers of components or raw materials, the manufacturers, the transporters, the wholesalers or distributors, 
the retailers and the customers. And between any two parties, there are three types of flows that take place. One is the flow of information and here order flow of order is also considered as a flow of information, flow of material or product and flow of cash or fund. So, these are the three flows that occur between any two parties. Now, the overall objective of a supply, supply chain is to maximize the overall value generated. So, I stress the word value and what is value? It is measured by the supply chain profitability and what is supply chain profitability or surplus? It is the revenue from sales. So, the customer pays whatever customer pays that is the revenue from sales minus all costs across the supply chain. If you subtract that what you get is the supply chain profitability or surplus and that is the value and the objective of a good supply chain is to maximize this overall value. Now, it one can take two views of a supply chain process of a supply chain process. A cycle view or a pull push view, a cycle view is basically this that customer places order with retailer, retailer gives a supply, makes a supply to customer. Retailer in turn places order for the same goods to the distributor, distributor replenishes the stock of retailer. Distributor stock comes down, it places order with the manufacturer manufacturer produces the goods and supplies it to the distributor. Manufacturer requires components and raw materials from the outside vendors and those vendors or suppliers supply the product. Thus, there are four different cycles, the customer order cycle, the replenishment cycle, the manufacturing cycle and the procurement cycle. This is the cycle view of a supply chain. Sometimes also people say that there is a pull push view. The customer pulls because it places and places a demand, customer pulls the uh, product and the manufacturer and the supplier, the manufacturer and supplies to the market or to the customer. So, it is a push process. So, sometimes this is also viewed as a pull push process. Now, between each cycle here there are different processes marketing of a product, receipt of order, supply of product, placing replenishment order and receiving the supply. So, these are different processes within each cycle. Now, there are three macro processes although there are large number of micro processes, but there are three macro processes one the with the customer that is the customer relationship management is gaining ground in marketing. When we shall discuss marketing we shall discuss more about customer relationship management known fondly as CRM. So, they are apart from preparing catalog and managing website providing after sales service is also important. Then the other is supply relationship management, supplier selection and negotiation of supply terms and then inside the supply chain which is the internal supply chain management where the warehouse should be located, how big should be the warehouse, how the inventory should be managed, how the items should be packed and shipped. These are concerns of the internal supply chain management. So, these are the three different macro processes customer relationship management, internal supply chain management and supplier relationship management. Now, when we design a supply chain one has first of all to 
think of what the competitive strategy of the enterprise is. Sometimes the enterprise wants to minimize the price that is the first objective. Sometimes the, the enterprise may say that the main objective should be to make the product available with the customer as quickly as possible. Sometimes the, the manufacturer may have a, a strategy or policy of making or designing new products and make it available as soon as possible. It should be as responsive to the customer demand as possible. So, different uh, competitive strategies a manufacturer may use. So, whatever supply chain strategy has to be decided has to be aligned with the organizational strategy, organization's competitive strategy. So, that is what is known as strategic fit, customers willingness to tolerate response time, the variety of products needed, service level required, product price, novelty of product design, what exactly the customer needs and how the what competitive strategy the organization should have. If that is decided in advance, the supply chain strategy should fit with this organizational competitive strategy. So, supply chain strategy then will be made with respect to the nature of procurement of raw materials, the transport of materials to and from the enterprise, manufacture of the product, distribution of the product to customer and follow up service. We shall discuss some of these in more detail just now. But before we do that, let us find out the drivers of supply chain performance. So, what we mean by performance? By performance, we mean basically two things. One is the responsiveness, how quickly we respond to the customer requirements and how with less cost we are able to make the supply, that is efficiency in terms of time and cost, particularly cost here. If these are the performance criteria, then the drivers are six of them. One, the number of facilities, the number of sites for storage and production, how many we shall have, where to store material and where to produce. The amount of inventory, raw materials, components, work in process and finished products. Transportation, information flow, where from we are getting the materials that is sourcing and then finally, pricing. So, these are different drivers of, of supply chain performance. Now, let us consider how to design the distribution network. Firstly, what is the meaning of distribution? Distribution refers to steps taken to move and store material and product from supplier to customer. So, all the steps that are taken to move material from the supplier to the customer is known as the distribution. And what are the various considerations when we design the distribution network? The response time, how quickly we are responding to the customer requirement product variety, product availability, it should not be out of stock, customer experience, time to market, order visibility, order visibility means the orders that are received by different players should be visible to the manufacturer and returnability, if customer wants to return certain items or if different parties because of a negotiation with them certain parties in the supply chain, they return their product. If that facility is, is there, that is also another consideration to design the distribution network. Now, these five graphs indicate how the different costs change with the requirements, desired response time. If the customer requires quickly 
that is less time they they need to get the material then naturally this there should be a number of sites a large number of sites in the supply chain so that customers by and large get the supply but if the customers are ready to wait then the supply chain can have less number of sites so the curve is something like this however if the response time is less and the number of facilities is more then the inventory cost is more because every facility will have some inventory with them so there will be large number of inventory large amount of inventory therefore inventory holding cost and other associated costs will be high if the number of facilities is high similarly if the number of facilities is high to at some time the transportation cost will be low but at after some time the transportation cost will rise because the fixed cost will rise and the number of trips to make will also rise now the as the number of facilities is more the cost of the site the plant cost and other fixed costs will also go up so on the whole if we add these costs inventory cost transportation cost and facility cost we shall see that the total logistic cost is something like a bathtub curve for a number of facilities that means number of facility the optimal values of the number of facilities somewhere here however the response time declines as the number of facilities rise the response time declines but to be able to give the services to the customer at a short time the cost associated is pretty high therefore the number of facilities can be optimized so that the cost is minimum while at the same time the response time is within reasonable limit now a distribution network there are different types of design options let us consider how from the how the customer gets the material one is that retail has the material customer picks up second manufacturer directly supplies to the customer third manufacturer storage with direct shipping and in transit merge that means from different manufacturers products come to one point and then they are supplied to the customer different parts of the final product come to one place and then the final product is merged and supplied to the customer or the distributor distributor may supply small packets through different carriers or the distributor can supply to different customers or the manufacturer the distributor stores at a point and the customer picks up so there are six different options for distributing goods to the customer now let's show them in graphical or in figures so that the idea becomes more clear this is the case of retail storage with customer pickup here the customers are here and this is this is a retailer the customers are placing the order with the retail retail has the items collected from the manufacturer so it supplies the product directly to the customers this is the product flow the farm line the order flow is the dotted line and retailer then places order with the different manufacturers and gets the supply so this is the manufacturers this is the retailers and these are the customers so this is the retail has the storage and customers picks up their desired goods from the retailer now this is the second option where 
the manufacturer has the main storage. So, what is the retails work? Retails work is only to pass on the information to the manufacturers. So, customers place their order with the retail because the retailer is close to the customers. So, this is the flow of orders dotted line and retailers in turn pass up depending on the type of re requirement by the customers. It informs the manufacturers either this or that and the manufacturer directly makes the supply to the customer. This direct shipping is also known as drop shipping, drop shipping. Direct shipping is also known as drop shipping. Now, manufacturer storage with direct shipping and in transit merge. Here, the customers place their orders with the retail as in the previous option. The retailer in turn informs the factories of the manufacturer. These are the different factories of the manufacturer. Each factory produces a particular part. So, parts of the final product are then collected from different factories and they get merged in a in another site and then by carrier they are sent to different customers to the designated customers. So, here there is a in transit merge by carrier. So, each factory of the manufacturer produces separate part that are required for the final product. This is the third option manufacturer storage with direct shipping and in transit merge. So, this is basically in transit merge is the additional thing. This option is the distributor storage with carrier delivery means that the distributor has the storage facility, the customers place their order with the distributor because they have the warehouse, distributor or retailer they have the warehouse where the material is or product is stored and as they get the order, the orders are filled by shipping the materials through small carrier, carriers are basically small packet carriers. So, they are supply and uh, the different factories of the manufacturer produce different parts or different components that are put here supplied to this place to the warehouse and from the warehouse the supply is made. So, this is distributor storage with carrier delivery. Distributor storage with last mile delivery. Now, here these are the factories of the manufacturer and these are the distributor warehouse or the retailer warehouse where the material is stored. Materials are supplied from the factory to the distributor the retailer and when the customers place their orders with the distributor or the retailer, the supply is made, but the supply is made as you can see with the last mile delivery. That means, it is door to door home delivery by distributors or retailers. So, what they do? They aggregate all orders and they make the supply to this customer first, then after this customer is uh, customer's order is uh, supplied if they go to the second customer and then to the third customer and then comes back. So, these are the facilities of the distributor storage with last mile delivery. Similar thing is done here also. So, this flow from one customer to customer another to another is basically the last mile delivery. Then we have manufacturer or distributor warehouse storage 
with customer pickup. So, once again the storing facility uh, here the manufacturer has got different factories as shown here these are the factories they supply products through trucks to a place now here to the retailers. Now, here each inbound truck has product from a supplier. So, this supplier uses a truck to supply its product, this supplier or factory sends here and each outbound truck has products from several suppliers for a buyer. Now, this outbound truck when it is supplied to this customer it gets material or components from each of them put together in one in one truck and then it is carried to the pickup sites. So, this is why it is called cross dock distribution center DC stands for distribution center. So, in the cross dock distribution center what is happening from every factory different components are coming and so each truck contains large number of components from one factory. So, here another truck contains large number of components from this factory whereas, the customer wants a particular product that might read two components here, two components here, one component here etcetera. So, with that the outbound truck meant for the customer is filled and set to this side this is called a pickup side. Then the customers come physically to the pickup side and picks up the material and go. So, this red arrow upward flow is basically the customer flow product flow as before downwards shown here and the information flow takes place upwards. The customer places order with the retail and the retail places the order with the manufacturer, but the manufacturer has got a different factories they supply products it cross docks and then sends it to the pickup sites the customers pick them up. So, customers here place demand online the customers are placing the demand online and collect products from the pickup sites. This is the manufacturer or the distributor warehouse storage with customer pickup. Now, sorry, uh, different their performance of the different designs have been compared or ranked basically. This is of course, almost subjectively they have been ranked. So, these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are the 6 options 1 retail storage with customer pickup and the last one 6 is the manufacturer storage with customer pickup. So, all the 6 options that we just now discussed they are in these columns and with regard to different dimensions such as response time etcetera they have been each ranked. For example, retail storage is ranked number 1 as far as the resp uh, response time is concerned whereas, 2, 3 and 6 direct shipping in transit merge and customer pickup are ranked fourth and rank 1 is the best. So, like that for each of these a ranking has been done almost subjectively. So, these ones that are appearing they are the best the highest rank the best. Now, let us consider we have so long considered the distribution aspects now let us consider the transportation aspect. In transportation aspects there are four types of parties involved one those who decide how to move the product to the customer to achieve the desired level of responsiveness at the lowest cost. So, it can be the manufacturers when the manufacturers ship it may be retailers when they ship 
when may, it may be distributors when they say. So, they are the shippers, but who are the carriers? They are basically the transporters who move the product. Carriers who move the product and owners of transportation equipment and infrastructure are the this is the third party. So, transportation equipment owners or infrastructure meaning rail let us say so, railways. So, they are the third party and fourth party is the operators of transportation equipment the drivers, the helpers etcetera, the loaders they are the operators. So, these are the <coughs> four different types of parties involved in transportation. Now, there are different modes of transportation air, package carrier, truck, rail, water, pipeline and intermodal. Air natural is the costliest and water it is said is the least cost mode of transport. Naturally, you will prefer air when the item is small, but of high value or emergency item. One can use package carriers that means, small packages if time is critical. One can use truck because it has high mobility, it can serve a door to door. One should go for rail when the volume is large or the product is heavy and it is to be transported over long distance. And water being the least expensive, very large volume, bulk and commodity shipments are usually made through water transport. Apart from this, there is a fifth type of transport mode of transport, it is called the pipeline, where crude and refined petroleum and natural gas is transported or are transported. And finally, there can be mix air followed by truck or by air followed by package carrier etcetera, etcetera. Now, there are different design options for a transportation network. Direct shipment network, direct shipping with milk runs, all shipments via central distribution center, shipping via distribution center using milk runs and tailored network. So, there are five different options for a transportation network. Let us see one by one. Direct shipment network. Here, these are the different suppliers and these are the places where the buyer is located. So, therefore, the shipment is made directly from the supplier to the buyers. So, as you can see this is the easiest form of shipment. However, it is also possible to ship goods from the suppliers to the buyers with milk runs. So, this is the case particularly from the supplier to the buyer. So, the truck moves from the supplier with products to be delivered at different to different buyers. So, it goes first to this buyer, then delivers the good, then goes to the second, delivers the good, then to the third, then to the fourth and then it comes back. So, this is the direct shipping, but with milk runs from door to door. So, these are milk runs to multiple buyers. Also, this is the case when the truck can collect materials from different suppliers 
and then serve it to a particular buyer. If a buyer requires large number of goods of different types that are manufactured or supplied by different suppliers, then it is this is good. There is a milk run from multiple for multiple suppliers and then once the truck is full it goes to the required buyer. So, this possibility also exists. Then shipments via central distribution center. So, it is possible that the different suppliers send their products to a particular location the distribution center and from there trucks carry to each buyer location different suppliers products in each truck. So, this is still another option. Then this is shipping via distribution center using milk runs. So, here what happens as you can see there is a distribution center suppliers products are delivered to the distribution center then depending on the buyers request for goods and their proximity the trucks carry goods to the first buyer and then serves to the second buyer and then comes back in this particular case another truck carries materials to this buyer then goes to the another buyer delivers the product then to the third buyer delivers the product and then comes back. So, this is the case of shipping via distribution center using milk runs. Now, once again their performance has been ranked here rank 1 means the lowest in terms of these criteria says for example, the transportation time water is the lowest and overall package is the lowest water is the highest. So, according to different criteria once again subjectively each has been ranked rank 1 here showing the lowest value rank 5 or 6 the highest value. Now, the second aspect that we would like to study in supply chain management is sourcing decisions meaning from whom to get our components or raw material. First thing is if the components whether to buy it from outside that is outsource or to make it in house. So, make or buy decision already we have studied in engineering economics how to decide whether to buy in from outside or to make it in house similar principles are first of all applied here. Basically outsourcing is good if the growth in supply chain surplus we have already defined profitability is large with a small increase in risk compared to doing it in house. Now, there are very many reasons why the outsourcing is done. Outsourcing is done because the third party to whom the work is or the it is outsourced they have larger capacity they have larger inventory and they have larger transportation system they have larger warehousing they can procure goods because they have larger needs so on and so forth therefore they result in lower cost and higher quality compared to what you can do because the third parties specialize in those components so these are the reasons why third parties can be useful to improve the supply chain surplus. Now, there are various aspects or various processes in sourcing assessment of a supplier 
selection of a supplier, negotiating with the supplier, using him or collaborating him in the design of the product, procure the products and then plan ahead for next year. These are different processes. We shall consider only a few that are important. First of all, assessment. Assessment of a supplier is to be done on the basis of different criteria. Supplier lead time, how long he takes, whether he gives it in time, whether we can change the orders, how frequently he gives, only once in a lot or partially first after some time and then fully after some other time, quality, cost, etc., etc., etc. So, these are different criteria against which the supplier's performance is judged. So, if there are 10 different suppliers who are eligible, then their performance can be judged on the basis of these criteria. Then to actually decide there are different ways, one is one way that is gaining ground today is auction. There are different types of auctions, but only a few are written down here. Sealed bead auction, this is prevalent in governments where every bidder or every supplier, potential supplier writes the bid in a in an envelope in a closed fashion or it can be English auction where the the uh, the party who makes the auction it fixes a price and then it asks the the bidders to say whether they are interested to supply the product at that price and and normally in an English auction because uh, the the price will be paid by the the price will be paid by the manufacturer let us say let us say that we are considering a situation where the manufacturer wants to select a supplier on the basis of auction then the manufacturer gives a very low price and then asks who can supply this product. Uh, I think uh, there is not much of a time to discuss this today. So, we will take up these auctions and negotiations and other issues of supply chain management in our next class. So, what we did today was to introduce the supply chain management issues and uh, in particular we discussed about different options that are used for design of distribution network and the modes of transportation. We will discuss in detail sourcing in our next class. Thank you very much.